Learning how to color grade log footage can be really difficult, and I've seen a ton of videos on YouTube explaining the process that might as well be in another language with how complicated they are. So what I wanted to do in today's video as someone who is not a professional colorist is show you how you can take your S-Log3 footage out of your Sony camera and pretty easily take it from looking like this to something more like this. What's up my dude, your friendly neighborhood Tony here and welcome to the spare tech room where I try to channel the power of hyperfixation to hopefully help you make better tech choices. And once you get this process down, you're gonna be able to color grade your footage in just a couple of minutes. So let's jump on over to my computer and I'll show you the process. Now I'm using DaVinci Resolve, which is a free editing and color grading program. So we'll jump into that. I'll show you how this is done. And then at the very end, I will actually time my process so that way you can see just how fast you're gonna be able to color grade your footage when this is all said and done. All right, and here we are in DaVinci Resolve. Now, I'm not going to give you a full walkthrough of the entire program here. That's not what this video is for. Otherwise, it would be hours long. Instead, I've already jumped on over to the color tab where you go to do your color grading. And I've already cut up my video, done all my editing and everything like that. And now we're just going to do a bit of color grading. I'm going to take you step by step through the process. Now, I am not a professional colorist, but I have been using this for a few years now, and I'm fairly comfortable with the process. So, all right, a couple things that you should probably know before you get started here. One is what I've done already is I've edited up the video that I'm gonna be color grading. And this is generally gonna be easier because once you start color grading, the footage itself is gonna be much more dense digitally, and so it's gonna be harder to edit. So normally you'll want to save your color grading for after you've already done all of the cutting and editing and all of that. Now you can color grade it first if you want to, but then you might just have to turn off the color grade in order to do the editing. So something to keep in mind, I'll show you once you've cut up your footage and you apply your color grade, how you can then apply that to all the rest of the footage. But for now, here we are on our color page and you'll notice a few things here. I'll kind of show you around a little bit. So in the top left, we have just our video. This is what we are currently looking at. This is what it looks like right now with just the S-Log3 footage applied. Below that, we have some clips. So these are the different cuts that I've done and all the different clips of footage that I've put together. Then below that, we have things like our color wheels. Uh, right now I'm in the sharpening tab, but you have all these different tabs here to adjust you know, your saturation and colors and all that fun stuff. Then you have some scopes over on the right. Uh, right now I'm looking at the waveform, but you also have a vector scope and histogram and all those different things that you can check out. Then above that, we have our library of effects that we can use, and we'll use a couple of those in just a bit. But to the left of that, you'll see just a big empty space. And this is where what are uh, effectively your layers. This is where that's gonna be, or nodes as they call them in DaVinci Resolve. So what we'll wanna do here first is create a few nodes, and that's gonna be dependent upon what kind of color grading you're gonna be doing. So for me, I just like to slap a few nodes on there and we can remove them as we go if we don't need all of them. But you can click into this space and just select, if you're on PC, uh, I think it's Alt S. If you're on Mac, Command S, and that'll add a node there. Now, if you want to add more nodes after this, you just continue with Alt S or Command S. If you want to add a node before the one you're already in, you'll want to hit Shift S and that'll add a, uh, a node before that. But it doesn't really matter at this point because you haven't made any edits to any of the nodes. So just go ahead and slap, I would say five or six of them on there. And the way this works, again, I'm gonna to try to keep this as simple as possible, is that as you make changes to each node, it will affect the ones further along the line. So if I make a change to this first node, it's gonna affect everything after that. Whereas if I make a change to the last node, it's only gonna affect that last node. So it's just a good way to kind of split up your color grading. You can do everything that you want to do in just one node, but then it gets a little messy because it's it's harder to go back and make adjustments. Okay, so since we are working in a log format, the first thing we wanna do is focus on how do we get our footage out of the log format and into a more visually appealing format, specifically Rec. 709, which is kind of the standard. And there's a couple ways to go about doing that. The easiest way though, in my opinion, is by using what's called a color space transform. So if you go over to the right side in this library here, you'll notice that it's actually already right there. But if you need to search for it, you can search for it here. Just type in color or space or transform or whatever. And you grab that and you're gonna drop it on the first node. Now, here's a couple things. You can take this footage from S-Log3 and convert it right into Rec. 709 if you want to, but there's something that I prefer doing that makes the editing process a little better, and that is taking your S-Log3 footage, converting it to a DaVinci Intermediate, and then at the end of the process, converting that into Rec. 709. And the reason why we do that is 
Rec 709 doesn't have a lot of uh, space to make adjustments to the colors. Whereas a format like S-Log3 or DaVinci Intermediate has way more space to work with. So you can push and pull the colors and the shadows and all of that a lot more without the image falling apart. So in this first node, I'm going to take that from S-Log3 into the DaVinci Intermediate. And we'll do that by, again, dropping the color space transform over that node and then going over to the right here and selecting our color space and gamma. And our input color space for this particular scenario if we click on this little drop down and then just type the letter S, it will take us down here to Sony S Gamut 3 Cine, which is the one we want to use. The input gamma is going to be S Log 3. So again, you just type S and select S Log 3. Now you'll notice it's already made some adjustments to the footage here using the timeline output color space and output gamma, which is what you have set up in your preferences. But I don't want it to convert that already into Rec 709. I want it to change that into da davinci intermediate so we will click on the output color space type the letter d and we'll go into davinci wide gamut and then the output gamma type the letter d davinci intermediate so what this does is it takes the s log 3 footage and it widens it out even further giving you more wiggle room to change your colors and all of that so we've done that in our very first node now we can name these nodes if we want to if you just right click on the node and select node label you can call this whatever you want. You could just say color space transform CST. So that way you know what you did in that node. And that's just a good way to kind of keep track of things if you need to go back and make any adjustments. Now, what I'll do here is in my second to last node, I will drop another color space transform. And that is going to be taking it from DaVinci. So we'll select DaVinci wide gamut, DaVinci intermediate. And we're going to actually take that into Rec 709 now. So we will select the output color space. Type the letter R, Rec 709, output gamma. For this particular scenario, we are going to go gamma 2.4. Now, you'll see there's a number of different gamma options here. That is going to be dependent on what you're doing with this footage. Um, if I remember correctly, I believe gamma 2.6 is like for movies, like for actual cinema. Um, I, I forget, but either way, 2.4, if you're doing online video like YouTube, that's what you want to select. So there we go. And you'll notice it's made some changes to our footage here. Also, I should mention, this is what we call a hero shot, which is basically a good still of your video that you can just leave it on in order to do all your color grading. So I just selected this one because, you know, you can see me pretty easily. And really this whole video is just a talking head video. So I don't really need to worry too much about, you know, different kinds of setups and different images, but you'll want to select a, a frame that is going to be easy for you to kind of see what's going on. So that way you can do your color grading. So, okay. Real simple, if you wanted to just leave this as is, if you just wanted to take your footage, S-Log3 to Rec 709 and call it a day, you could, but there are still some changes that you might wanna make to the video. So what we're gonna do here is jump into some of our other nodes and make some adjustments there. And you'll hear people talk about the order in which you want to do things as far as changing your white balance and your contrast and all of that. I find that it doesn't make much of a difference as long as you have your color space transforms set up correctly. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and label this one CST2. So that way I know what that node is. But as long as you have that flow correct, whatever you do in between them in whatever order you do it, isn't gonna make that much of a difference. So what I like to do here with this first one is I like to just adjust my exposure. Now I expose this, I think, pretty well. The exposure and the white balance are both pretty good. If they weren't, this is probably where you wanna make those adjustments. And there are a few ways to go about that. You can jump down into these wheels here and adjust the exposure to your lift, gamma, and gain, or just the overall image here in the offset. You can drop down the exposure, raise it up. And you'll notice actually, since I have the waveform over here on the right-hand side, you'll see where my exposure is as far as how dark things are getting or how bright things are getting. So I'll just reset that for now. Normally what I'll do for this particular shot because there aren't really any absolute pitch black areas and, and no you know absolute white areas, is I will take this pitch black point here and I will drop it right into this really dark shadowed area. And you'll notice that brought down my shadows all the way to pitch black. So what I'll do here is in the lift, which is where all your shadows are, is I will raise that up just a bit. So it brought it down to about 
negative 0.03, negative 0.04. I'll probably bring that up to, and I'll just reset this. I'll, I'll bring that to negative 0.0, maybe two. So we'll do that. And what you can do here, if you want to see kind of the before and after of what you've just changed is on that node, you'll see where it says the number two. If you click on that, it turns it off and then turns it back on. So I kind of like what this did with the contrast in the image. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that as is. Now you can also adjust the white balance if you want to. A really easy way to do that is to take this little dropper here, the white balance dropper, and you want to find somewhere in your image that has a neutral color to it. So this is a little difficult because I've got a lot of, you know, different colors, yellows and browns and all of that. But if you can find maybe like a gray point, maybe something like my shirt here and click on that, it's going to adjust the, the white balance of your image accordingly. Now you didn't notice much of a change at all because I had my white balance already set in camera. But if you don't, or if your white balance is off for whatever reason, you can do that and it will adjust it to try to make it as accurate as possible. So, okay, we'll go ahead and label this node. Uh, I'll call it white balance and exposure. So that way I kind of know what I did there. Now we'll move into our next node. And here is, you know, I'll probably do something in this node like adjust uh, maybe the saturation. So I do like to bump up my saturation a little bit, nothing crazy, but give it a little more vibrancy, a little more color in my image. And in order to do that, you'll just come right down here to the saturation slider. And I like to go with about 60. Its default is 50, but I just bump it up a little bit and you'll notice the before and after by turning off that node. I just feel like it looks more vibrant, more colorful. Uh, it's just an image that I prefer. So I will leave the saturation there and I'll label that node saturation or just SAT. That'll do. And honestly, that's most of what I like to do for my image here. It's nothing crazy. You're just fixing your white balance, your exposure, you know, your, your pitch black point, applying a little bit of contrast or saturation. I can remove this node because I'm not using it right now. I can just highlight it and delete, and that will cut it out of the lineup here. Now, in this very last node, this is one that I like to add a little bit of flavor. And some people will do this by making some artistic changes to the image, maybe adding like an orange teal look or doing whatever kind of stylistic choices. I like the more natural look to my image, so I don't really mess with that a lot. But what I may do here is add maybe some film grain or a vignette, maybe change the sharpening a little bit. In fact, I'll do that because S-Log3 tends to not make your image particularly sharp. So I'll just take that. Uh, right now it's at 50 and you'll notice I clicked on this blur tool here, and you'll just take your radius and I'll drop that down to maybe, maybe 47. Let's see what that looks like. So 47, I'll turn that on and off. That might be a little too sharp. So let's go 48 on that. You just barely want to adjust it. So I'll adjust the sharpening there. I might add some film grain later on, or like I said, a vignette. You can apply noise reduction if you need it. You can apply uh, a beauty filter if you want. There's a beauty filter on here. Let's see what that looks like. You know, if you're having a bad day, if you didn't get enough sleep, you go ahead and throw that beauty filter on and I guess it smooths out your face a little bit. But yeah, that is a super easy way to color grade and make some, some minor but significant changes to your footage. You know, if we go ahead and turn this on and off, you'll see that we went from this super bland, washed out S-Log3 look to what I think is a, a pretty good looking, vibrant, fun, color filled image. So again, to walk you through the process, let's turn all these off. And we start first by taking our S-Log3 footage and turning it into DaVinci Intermediate, DaVinci Wide Gamut. Then we go in, adjust our white balance and exposure to make sure those are on point apply a bit of saturation or some contrast. Then we transform the color space from DaVinci into Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. And then finally we apply a little bit of, of style. We sharpen it up, you know, apply that film grain, throw on the beauty filter, whatever you want to do. But that is it, a super simple process. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete all of this and I'm gonna show you just how quickly I can get this done. Again, I am not a professional, I am an amateur just like you, but I'll show you once you get the hang of this process, how quickly you can have your footage color graded. All right, so here we go. I am deleting all of my nodes here and we'll start the timer as soon as I get going here. So ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five different nodes. First node, color space, transform, S-Log3 into DaVinci. Then we go ahead and set the second to last one, DaVinci. 
This is real time. I'm not fut futzing with this at all. Rec 709, Gamma 2.4. This one, our white balance and exposure is pretty fine, but we will drop that down to negative 0.02 to give us a little bit more contrast. This one, we will change our saturation to 60, give us a little boost in saturation. Here, we will adjust our sharpening to 48 as we had it. And uh, just for fun, let's throw on that beauty filter. Because <laughs> why not? Boom, there we go, all done. That took a few seconds to go ahead and color grade this image completely. Now, if you want to take this and apply it to the rest of your clips, really simple here, make sure you have clips turned on so that you can see all of the footage and you just select the one that has been color graded and copy that, control C, highlight all the rest, control V, and then everything there is color graded. So super simple, super easy to do. You know, there are some people that create different LUTs, uh, lookup tables that you can automatically apply to your footage to have this done. Honestly, in my opinion, the vast majority of those are a waste of money. So please do not waste your money buying any of those. I'm not gonna sell you anything like that because this is so easy to do. Really, you can do it if you just take a few minutes to figure it out. I really hope that this video helped you out. If you have any questions about this process, definitely let me know in the comments below. Again, I'm not an expert when it comes to this, but if there are other maybe DaVinci Resolve videos that you'd like to see me do, also let me know in the comments. Now, hopefully here I've showed you how you can take your footage and make it look even better. I did do another video recently on how to make the audio in your video even better by hooking up something like this short SM7B microphone directly into your camera. It's a super easy and inexpensive process. So if you wanna watch that video, I'll go ahead and link it, I guess, over here at the end of this video. So go ahead and jump on into that next. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you next time in the spare tech room. All right, be good.